So, you want to train with heart rate, but you're not quite sure what you need to do, where you need to go. I'm going to give you some tips. The first thing you need is a heart, and the second thing, oh, a park run, preferably flat like the one that I'm at. The other two things that you're going to need are a watch and a heart rate strap. Now there's a very specific reason that I say flat park run and that's because we want to get an average heart rate and it's a lot harder to get a good average when you're on a hilly park run where the... It's really windy out here. And now it's raining as well. The reason for the flat park run, like I say, is because hills mean that you spike in heart rate when you're running up them and your heart rate drops off significantly when you're running down them. It's hard to get a good average. A flatter park run allows you to put an even pace in and get an average heart rate at high effort. Now, obviously it doesn't need to be a park run, it doesn't have to be. That just simulates racing conditions the best. But if you've got a 5k loop or a 5k route that you can use that's relatively flat near you, then go out and do that. But just be aware that you're gonna have to push yourself very hard, that's the point of this, because what we're looking for is our lactate threshold heart rate. That's the heart rate that your body can sustain for an aerobic event without reducing in performance. If you go over that heart rate, then the lactic acid accumulates and your body has to slow you down just to flush the lactic acid away. So we're looking for that functional threshold. It's sometimes called the functional threshold, sometimes called the lactate heart rate threshold, what, whatever it is. I'm going to do it on the computer and what I'm going to do is at this, I'm going to look at some of Mary's stats and show you how I get her functional threshold heart rate. So the first thing is I use training peaks but we're going to go through a couple of ways that you can get this very very easily. So using training peaks I found Mary's 5k, I'm clicking on that and clicking on analyse and I'm looking at her statistics. Here I can see that overall her average heart rate is 176 but it usually takes a little while to climb from standing still. So what we do is we take the average heart rate from the last three kilometers of the run. So I'm gonna highlight those three laps, which are the last three kilometers from Mary. And that gives me for the 12 minutes that she's been running the last three kilometers, her average heart rate is 185 beats per minute. So that is her functional threshold heart rate that we're looking for. And if you don't have training peaks, I'm gonna show you how to do it using Strava, which is a free app, you don't have to pay for the upgrade and it can do it. One thing I will say though is set your watch or whatever watch you're using to capture one kilometer splits rather than just your 5K because that will be a lot harder on these types of apps that I'm gonna to use to get your last three kilometer heart rate data. So get myself onto Strava. So what we do is, Look at the last three here, okay? The last three kilometer heart rates, 188, 183, 184. I've already done the calculations and guess what? Functional threshold, 185. So we now know that is her functional threshold heart rate. Now, how to calculate the zones. This bit's really easy. So now that we have Mary's rough estimate of functional threshold heart rate, I'm gonna go back onto Google. All I'm gonna type in, you can see I've already searched for it, is Joe Friel's heart rate zone calculator. I like to use Joe Friel's training zones. Click the link, go down. If you don't have training peaks, don't go on the training peaks one because that just shows how to do it within training peaks. So I've used endurancepath.com, but at the top here you can see that it says enter your heart rate threshold, 185, and that gives you all of your zones using the percentage calculations that Joe Friel uses, which is the same as I use, which is the same as a lot of people use. Using these zones, you can now really tailor your training using your heart rate. You can keep yourself in the low zones, in the base zones, and really be tight about it with your watch, or you can push yourself to your absolute limit and know that you're going in zone four, maybe zone five, and you can keep in a tempo zone knowing what your zone three is, which is here. So that's how you calculate your heart rate zones and it's how you train with heart rate. It's not an exact science. If you want an exact science, you've got to go to a lab and get that tested. This is a rough estimate and everyone will be different, but this is just an easy way to access heart rate training to start the process, let's say, and then really take you to the next level. Good luck with it all. Hope that helped. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll see you Sunday.